In this video, I'm gonna teach you guys the secrets to becoming an elite level backstroker by improving your turns and underwaters. My name is Kyle Millis and I'm a former college stroker and I specialized in backstroke at Cal where I swim amongst countless Olympians and world champions. So much so that we got the nickname Backstroke U. I'll be passing along my elite backstroke knowledge and talking about the mechanics of the backstroke flip turn and sharing my four key tips to improving your backstroke underwaters and racing past your competition. So when thinking about backstroke turns, there's three things to keep in mind. And the first one is a little secret that I'm gonna let you guys in on called the double arm backstroke pull. Now legally, when you're doing backstroke, you're only allowed one freestyle pull over. Now using this backstroke tip, you're actually able to legally do a double arm freestyle pull if executed correctly. So first things first, when you're coming into the wall in backstroke, you need to know your stroke count. My stroke count is three strokes. So I go one, two, three typically. But in doing this double arm backstroke pull, you need to subtract one stroke and hold your breath as soon as you hit the flags to ensure proper execution. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna be swimming backstroke. You're gonna come into the flags, one, two, and on that second stroke, you're gonna follow this arm over and then have your third stroke allow you to do a double arm pull into the wall. Might seem confusing, but let's demonstrate how this looks. So the next two elite level tips to ensuring that you have a proper turn. The first one is making sure you're not looking at the wall. Now, a lot of elite level swimmers still do this and you can get away with it. However, in the short course format, it's a lot harder to get away with it while still being a high level swimmer. So what you're gonna wanna do at every pool that you go to is practice in warmups. What you're gonna wanna do is look at the distance between when you come over, know where the T is at the bottom of the pool. As soon as you see that T and your head lines up with the position, just turn without having to lift your head to see where the T on the wall is. Let's give a proper demonstration of that right now. Notice that when I'm going through my turn, I don't lift my head up at all. It's super important in the yards format of swimming to have great turns, and that's what all college swimmers swim in. If you're doing a short course 100 backstroke, you have three turns. If you're doing a long course 100 backstroke, you only have one turn. That's three times the amount of turns that you have to do, and thus two times more to advance on your competitor than you hypothetically would in a long course 100 backstroke. By not lifting your head when you're going into your turn, it allows your body to stay in a proper streamline, head tucked, allowing the water to rush over your head instead of lifting your head and having all the water hit your face and thus slowing you down. Which brings me to my third tip, coming off the wall. Now, a lot of swimmers like to go with the big check mark swoosh and they push down when they're coming off the wall. And that's totally fine if you're a really strong underwater kicker. However, if you're not, it would best behoove you to push off flat from the wall. What I mean by this is that it allows you to push off flat and slowly increase your speed back to the surface of the water. The rationale behind this is that if you're doing a 45 degree angle push downwards and then arcing back up like a check mark, you're gonna be having to cover more distance than if you just swam and pushed off a little bit below the surface and we're just kind of skimming right under the surface. Think about it, there's more area to cover. However, some swimmers say that they feel like they get better kicks when they're kicking deeper in the water. So it's something to think about. Look at these examples of me pushing off the wall. On one hand, I'm pushing off, going a little bit deeper getting some bigger kicks in as opposed to the other one where I'm swimming a little bit flatter closer to the surface and we go to the same position right we get there at the same amount of time it's really just a matter of preference what you don't want to be doing though is pushing off and going straight down no that's not what you want to do if you're going down and going to this check mark swoosh push down at a 45 degree angle and quickly start ramping back up if you go too deep in your underwaters then you're actually going to be overdoing it and going a little bit farther than you actually need it to so find out what works best for you and time yourself it goes back to what I said last week about filming yourself when you're swimming, time yourself when you're doing underwaters. What method works best for you to get fastest to 15 meters? And now with turns covered, let's go to the important piece that you've all been waiting for, the underwaters. So we just spoke a little bit about the angle that you should push off the wall, but let's talk a little bit more about the technicalities behind the mechanics of underwaters. First thing to mention when you're doing backstroke underwaters, you're gonna wanna have a varied kick from your 50 to your 100 to your 200 backstroke. In your 50 backstroke, you're gonna have a much faster rhythm of kick than you're doing with your 200. The 200 backstroke is supposed to have a little bit more of an elongated kick, a little bit slower of a rate, and that's really just to help you guys so you don't burn out. It's 
not a sprint. The 200 backstroke is a fine art that needs to be executed properly. So you need to have a separate kick than you do for the 50 or the 100 backstroke. Next up is bending your knee. It's something you don't want to do when you're doing underwaters. Despite what many think, your underwaters are actually driving from your hips not from you bending your knee and cranking. In fact, if you're bending at the knee, you're not getting any of the strength that your quads and glutes provide you in your underwater dolphin kick. And you're not really getting the full range of motion that you could be from your underwater kick. So it's important to, again, go back and film yourself and see where your power is coming from when you're doing these underwaters. Make sure that it's coming from your hips and that you're not just bending at your knee and cranking your legs up and down. Now, a big distinction that I like to make when talking about backstroke underwaters as opposed to freestyle underwaters is that there's no bending of your upper body. You're not going to be doing the Caleb Dressel underwaters. I know, he's got a lot of upper body movement you're not gonna be doing that. For backstroke, it's super important to keep a strong core and a stable upper body that complements yourself with a tight streamline at the top of your head. You're not gonna be bending your arms back and forth just like you're not gonna be trying to wave your chest back and forth. Everything comes from the hips down when you're doing underwaters and backstroke. There's so many great examples of backstroke underwaters, but I always like to look at Ryan Murphy because he almost over-exaggerates the stability. Like there is no movement in his upper body when he's doing backstroke underwaters. Now, something that you'll see in that clip from Ryan Murphy as opposed to everyone else in the field is that he maintains really stable, even compared to the world's best that are swimming right next to him. He swam in the college format. He knows how many turns you have to be doing and how you have to be elite at underwaters if you want to take it to be the world's best on the world stage. Sure, he's racing meters a lot, but he goes back to his college swimming roots where he perfected his underwaters by having a strong upper body. Up next, we have head positioning, and this is where I see some of the most common mistakes being made in backstroke underwaters. Young swimmers are moving their chin downwards. That's not what you want to be doing when you're in backstroke underwaters. If you're like this, there's water that's gonna be rushing over your head and into the crack between your arms and your head and thus slowing you down even further. By maintaining a steady body position and maintaining your arms in between or just pressed against the back of your head, not back here, not in front of you, right here or right here, there is a distinction. You're going to be making up tenths of a second off every single turn that will turn into seconds. And the last thing I wanna talk about is breath control. And one of the reasons underwaters are so hard for many swimmers is because they don't have the lung capacity to be pushing it to 15 meters off every wall. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight and you need to train your body to be acclimated to holding your breath for long periods of time and when you're tired. When you're coming off your final turn in the 100 backstroke and it's a matter of who stays under the longest, the person who's probably gonna end up being victorious is the person that had the best underwaters off the last wall. Ryan Lawford talked about this in a video that I did with him, and he's one of the world's best at underwaters, one of the best that we've ever seen in the NCAA. He always talked about how this wasn't something that he did once at practice or twice a week worked on it with his coach. Every time he was touching the water, underwaters were on his mind because 60% of his swimming, 15 meters in a 25 yard pool, was going to be underwater. Underwaters have to be something that you incorporate into your daily routine, and over time, you will be able to grow your breath control. It takes lots of practice and mental toughness to build up your underwater capacity. Consistency is key and there's lots of drills that you can do to help improve your lung capacity. Check out my video that I did with Ryan Hoffer if you haven't already to learn how you can become elite at underwaters. If you guys like this video or learned something today, consider subscribing to my channel for lots more swimming content. I'll see you guys next week.